Hey friends, my sound design and synthesis Ableton online course has finally launched. To celebrate, I've decided to get two birds stoned at once by showing you one of the many rad workflows I show in the course, and that's nonlinear time stretching with Granulator 2. Let's get it. Okay, so here's a recording of my acoustic guitar. Sounds like this. So, if you've ever taken audio and stretched it with warping, you're actually using granular synthesis, believe it or not. Because what's happening is, is it's taking individual grains or little micro samples of this audio and playing it over and over again to make up the extra space you need. Like for example, if you hold shift, see that little arrow that appears by the cursor? If I click and drag this, now listen to this. We can hear those grains playing forward and backward, trying to make up the extra time that just isn't there, right? And of course you have different warp modes. You have texture mode, which is my favorite. It makes it sound like super weird. All of these modes here, these are granular synthesis modes, okay? They're different modes that time stretch your audio. This is cool. You can do a lot of fun stuff with this. I mean, what's really rad about it is that if you're trying to play to a beat, you can click on these little warp markers and move them around and, you know, adjust your audio as you see fit, right? To, to fit whatever you're doing if the timing was off, right? So these are really practical ways of, of using this. They call it elastic audio, but at the end of the day, it's granular, okay? But what we're gonna look at is something that's just so amazing, and that's nonlinear time stretching using Ableton's Granulator 2 that comes with Max for Live. So I'm gonna go ahead and start a, a new MIDI track, and I'm gonna drag Granulator into it. So Granulator 2 is an incredible device. Let's go ahead and we're gonna drag. You can put any audio in it. I'm just gonna drag this acoustic guitar into here. Now, if I play C3, <laughs> we're just kind of hanging out around here, right? This is the file position is what it's showing you, okay? And I can move that around. You also have grain size, and so if I turn this up, it decreases the grain size, so we go from to very, very small, right? If I take the, this file position and bring it all the way to the beginning, I can automate this file position, right? So if I, if I hit the A key, I'm looking at my automation, right? And we can see file position is selected here. If you wanna show your automation, you always click that button or hit the A key, right? So we can see that, okay. I could take this, for example, maybe we'll just do it right here. I could take this and you can see that it moves through the file position, right? Now, that's one way to do this, okay? Another way to do this is just simply turn on scan, okay? So what scan does is that at this moment, with scan at 100% time, it's just gonna play through this audio as if it was just normal. Check it out. Now you might hear that that sounds a little bit as if it's got a little bit of tremolo on it. Well, that's because it's playing different grain sizes. So I'm gonna go ahead and decrease the grain size. Take a listen. <laughs> you can hear it get kind of grainy, right? It just gets a little grainy. No, but what I want to show you is that you can time stretch in all kinds of ridiculously crazy fun ways, all right? So one of them is just to use this scanning thing. So for example, if I make the time go to 200, we're now twice as slow as the original audio. We can go, <laughs> this is so crazy. We can go to the most intensely long times. We could go all the way up to 10,000. Now, if you listen closely, the audio is slightly changing. That's because it's just barely moving through there. I'll move it down to something more practical, maybe like 2,000. <laughs> right? Now, what's cool about this is that you're like, all right, well, great, man. Like, that's, that's kind of fun or whatever. What's cool about this is that you can start to introduce all kinds of really fun random things that will occur to the grains. For example, we can turn up spread, and what this will do is that it will slightly alter the timing of the left and the right grains, and you get this amazing spread. Check this out. That's without it. That's with it. Let's go ahead and bring this down to something more practical. You also have spray, and what spray will do is it will choose random start positions for these grains. So check this out. Cool. 
cool. So what I want to explore now is how we can take advantage of this. So I have this little riff going on here. Check it out. It sounds like this. Right, so I could just take my acoustic chords and just put them over here. But instead, let's have fun with some nonlinear time stretching, all right? So I have my four chords, one, two, three, four. And there's four chords in this riff, right? So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start identifying different areas where the chords are. So the first step in order to do this is I need to select this whole area of time and hit Shift-Command or Control-M to make a MIDI track, and I'm going to just play C3, okay? C3 is going to yield me my original pitch, right? So now that when this plays... it's going to hang out at that original chord area, right? So the way the riff goes, if we listen, is it's like this. I'll go ahead and mute this. So what I need to do here is, is go ahead and automate the file position to get these different chords going, right? So I'll say this first one, we need to remain within this area. So it's just as easy as, okay, right here, and then I'll just go up to right here. I'll put the cursor over here just to make sure I'm right. Yeah, maybe more like that. Check it out. Right? <laughs> so maybe I'll go all the way up here and go in reverse, right? Check it out. Cool, maybe for this third chord, I'll start here and I'll go up to, I don't know, something like that. And then the final note, we'll go from the end of it and back to the beginning of it. <laughs> Let's see what this does. Oh, that's so cool. I love this. This tool is so incredible. Now, that's only automating the file position. Now that we have the file position set, we can do all kinds of wacky stuff. You can hear that spray is on. If I turn spray all the way down, we just get... which is cool, but spray adds that fun randomness, right? And then grain size, we can change the grain size for each one of these. Let's go ahead and look at file position, and maybe this one I won't move it as much, but I'll change the grain size. So as this plays for this first chord, I'll just decrease the grain size as it plays. This should get wild. We'll make it go real intense. Yeah, let's do that same thing here. Right? And so I'll just go ahead and copy my same automation for the second run through. Boom. <laughs> Fun stuff all day. And maybe for this time, I'll change the spray a little bit. Okay, so that's kind of the first use that I would look at for nonlinear time stretching. Now let's take a look at another one. I have added this clap sample that I made to my drum set, right? So it sounds like this. Let's just go ahead and listen to the drums. So yeah, okay, cool, whatever. Let's make a MIDI track and we'll drag Granulator into this and I'll take this snare drum and drag it into here. Now, knowing what you know already, Maybe you can start to think of what I might try to do here. I'm gonna turn this off, okay? This clap sample off. And instead, I'm just gonna select this area of time, shift command M, and I'll just make a snare drum hit right here at C3, okay? And so what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna play C3, and as you can see, look, it's not even hitting anything, right? That's because we put the file position all the way over here. We gotta bring it back to the beginning, and now we get... <laughs> so we can get some wacky stuff going on there. But what I want to do is I want to scan, right? Because I want it to play and then not play. So at 100% time, again, that's just, boom. That's all that that is. <laughs> it just plays through the file, right? But if I increase the grain size and I start to turn up spray, check it out. Uh-oh. Wackiness. <laughs> now let's go ahead and do something else. I'm going to increase the time which will make it play through slower, right? 
<laughs> Wackiness. Now, some of those grains that it's making, I'd like this to kind of do like a like a like constant percussive little hits. Something else I want to show you is that there's also a shape or a windowing to the grains. And at this moment, all the grains that are made will have this like smooth uh, envelope, right? This is like attack and this is decay, right? Attack, decay. So what we can do is we can change this to fall. So now all of them will have a sharp attack. And thanks to the spray, we're getting these different sounds every time. If it sprays all the way down, we just get... Which is cool, but spray makes this, you know, random. And we can get a little bit more stereo by turning up spread. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this. And now we are non-linear time stretching this snare drum. Okay, let's see what this does. <laughs> Love it. Okay, now finally I want to show you one more thing. Granulator 2 is incredible at using vocal samples, right? So when you put vocal samples into here, um, and you want to make them your own, right? You want to make these samples uh, not the original recordings. You want to kind of screw them up, mess them around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this granulator 2 and slap it on here. And this is, of course, Carl Sagan's Pale Blue Dot. So I'm going to turn on scanning, and I'm going to put file position at the beginning, and now we get the original sample-ish. Consider again that dot. That's here. That's home. Okay. So, at this moment, nothing really is changing, right? But, what's cool about this is, first of all, Granulator 2 is a lot like simpler in that the keyboard becomes mapped, so now old Carl can be a lot <laughs> deeper voiced. Right? That's one thing. But, of course, we have all the fun that we can have with this along with vocals. So, I'm going to go ahead and play it up at C, but this time, let's decrease the grain size a little bit. Consider again that dot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start using spray. Consider again that dot. Okay, things are getting weirder. Consider again that dot. Now something else that we can do is we can slow down time, of course. Consider again that dot. <laughs> I'll go to a different place. Everyone you ever heard of. Every human being who ever was. See, so, so I hope you can start to see what the potential is here. By moving file position or time around, you can move through the vocal in a completely nonlinear fashion and just suit it or fit it to your music, right? Everyone you ever heard of. Ev everyone, you, everyone you ever heard of. Ev everyone you ever heard of. <laughs> it's just so much fun. And with these controls, as I increase grain size, we get weirder and weirder stuff. Everyone you, everyone you, everyone you ever heard of. Now, there's a whole other side to uh, Granulator 2, and that's the, what they call the filter side, but there's all kinds of other fun stuff, such as random pitch. Everyone you ever heard of. Everyone you ever heard of. Everyone you ever heard of. <laughs> there's an FM thing where this is an oscillator, and you can spin it up and make it all weird. Everyone you ever heard of. Every human being who ever was. <laughs> So yeah, as you can see, Granulator 2 is an insanely deep device. So deep, in fact, that there's an entire section dedicated to just Granulator 2 in the sound design course that I just released. If you want to learn more about that sound design course, the links are in the comments and in the description. I also wanted to say that I made a little webinar. Uh, folks have been asking, I would love to, to watch you produce a track. Well, I made a little webinar. It's about a half hour long of me making a produced beat. And so if you're interested in watching that, those links are also down below. I just want to say thanks so much, everybody, for the opportunity to continue to do this. Your support means everything to me. If you want to support the channel, of course, liking, commenting, subscribing, that's great. If you want to check out the courses, that's awesome. If you want to just follow me on SoundCloud, Spotify, all that stuff, all those links are down below. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Much love, everybody. I'll see you next time.